Hey shooters, my name is Adam Storch. I am the match director for the Old Bridge Steel Challenge League. Now we've seen a big increase in participation over the last year and the team and I thought it might be good to put together a video on what it means to get involved in Steel Challenge. And again, the key is getting involved in Steel Challenge. If you're looking for a video that shows you how to shoot sub twos on Smoke and Help, why are you on the wrong video? If you want that video, you might want to go back to the search bar on YouTube and type in Max Michelle, KCU CBU, BJ Norris, or maybe Jesse Duff. This video is all about getting started in Steel Challenge and what you need in order to get into Steel Challenge. So let's get started. So the topics we're going to cover are equipment, what do you need in order to shoot Steel Challenge, the different divisions that you can compete in based on your equipment, We'll do a stage overview so you understand the components of a stage, so when you get to a stage, it's familiar to you. We'll do a stage run-through so you get a real flavor for the terms and what's going on when you're actually shooting a stage. Then we'll go over the eight stages that make up Steel Challenge and how they're scored. And then finally, we'll touch base on the classifications. So if you guys stick with this, which I highly recommend you doing, you'll know what it means to get classified and how to see how you're improving over time. The equipment we're going to need, pretty obvious, but let's cover it. First, we're going to need, of course, either a pistol or a rifle. When we talk about pistol, we're talking about either a iron sight pistol or a pistol with an optic. All right. When we talk about optic, we're talking about a red dot. You do not need any magnification. The farthest target away is 35 yards. Most of them are somewhere around 17 to 20 some odd yards away. All right. So when we talk about an optic, we're talking about a red dot. When we talk about calibers, there we're talking on the center fire side, your 9, a 45, a 38, you know, all depends on what you're into from a center fire perspective. Or we're talking about a rim fire. In other words, your 22. And when it comes to 22, same principle, either a red dot or iron sights. When we talk about rifles, same principle applies. We can go off and have a rim fire rifle, or we can have a pistol caliber carbine, such as this which is available 9, 40, 45. Obviously, a 223 and a 308 are not pistol calibers. For those of you who think a 223 or a 308 is a pistol caliber, it means you've been using Hollywood as your firearms educator. No. 9, 40, 45, those types of calibers, pistol calibers, are what we're talking about when we talk about these kinds of rifles. Now, we also are going to need magazines. You're going to need five magazines minimum, all right? Five magazines, as in you're going to do five runs. We'll touch base on that more, but at minimum, I would get five. It's always nice to have a sixth in case of emergency. Now, if you're shooting center fire pistols, you're going to need a holster. All right. There's different kinds of holster. This is what's called a race holster. All right. Because basically you're putting the gun in and it's just really covering the trigger guard. All right. There's also other kinds of holsters, but the key is you need a holster for your center fire pistol. If you're shooting a rimfire pistol, you're going to need a bag because when you show up to the stage, the pistol will be sitting in the bag, okay? If you're dealing with your rifle, the rifle will have a flag on it, as you saw a moment ago, or a bag for that rifle. The next thing you got to keep in mind is the grossly obvious. Hearing protection and eye protection. If you've got glasses, you're good to go. If not, you need to make sure you have safety glasses. But these are the key pieces of equipment you're going to need to shoot Steel Challenge. Now let's talk about divisions. There are 13 divisions in the Steel Challenge Shooting Association that you can compete in. Those 13 divisions are really broken up into two sets, your optics and your iron sights, both of which include, of course, pistol and rifle. We've got some pictures here to help us talk through what those different divisions are to give you some examples. Let's get started. Carry optics, pistol open, optical sight revolver, rimfire pistol open, then we get to the rifle side of life. You've got your rimfire rifle open and then pistol caliber carbine open. And on the iron sights side of life, you've got your iron sight revolver, you've got limited, you've got production. And the difference between limited production is production, you're dealing with 10 round magazines and your standard holster, whereas in limited, you can use a race holster, similar to the holster I showed you earlier. You've got your single stack division, which is more or less your 1911s. And then you've got your rimfire pistol iron sights, which of course is your rimfire pistol with iron sights. And you've got your rimfire rifle iron sights. 
Then again, your room fire rifle with the iron sights. And of course, pistol caliber carbine. And I can't stress enough, pistol caliber carbine, your 9, your 40, and your 45. So let's do a quick stage overview so you can better understand the components of a stage. That way, when you get to a stage, things run a lot smoother. Now, with every stage, you're going to have five plates. In this example, we've got five plates that are all round. This happens to be roundabout. Okay, you'll notice that four of the five posts these plates are sitting on are brown, one is red. The plate with the red post is the stop plate. That is the last plate you will hit every time you shoot a string. So whether you start left to right, right to left, the last plate you must hit is that stop plate. The moment you hit that plate, your scoring stops. And if you've missed anything or haven't shot a particular plate, you will incur a penalty. So the last plate you hit is the one with the red post, the stop plate. When we talk about an aiming point, that would be your flag or your cone, in this case a cone and sign. That is your low ready aiming point. So in other words, when you're dealing with your rimfire pistol, your rimfire rifle, or your pistol caliber carbine, you'll be starting from the low ready position and aiming at that flag. When you get to your stage, you're going to be told to step into the shooter's box by your range officer. The moment you step into that shooter box, the range officer will tell you what to do and when to do it. Okay. Once you've stepped into that shooter's box, you will then turn around and take your mags if you've carried them separately in a pouch. You'll put those to your left. Anything else you have will go to that left and sit on that equipment bench. You will not touch that until, of course, your range officer tells you to, and we'll cover that in a moment. Now, when you're all done shooting, your fellow shooters will scurry quickly to grab that can of paint and paint your targets. So if you're shooting, when you're done, you'll leave the stage, but your other fellow shooters, which will be you when one of your fellow shooters are shooting, will grab that can of paint and go off and paint the appropriate targets. It's time for a stage run through. Now, when you arrive at your stage with your other shooters, the person with the iPad usually is going to list the roster, or I should say announce the roster. The key things are who is up, who is on deck, and who is in the hole. The key for you is to know your name and what order you're in. Now, when your name is called or you know you're next, you want to be ready to head over to the shooter's box. Do not be wandering around. I guarantee you the easiest way to annoy your fellow shooters is to be wandering around chatting when it's your turn to shoot. So, be ready. When it's your turn to shoot and you go to the shooter's box, you want to arrive with five loaded magazines. Those magazines are either in your pouch or they're on your belt. But the key is those magazines are loaded. The last thing you want to do is arrive at the shooter's box with unloaded magazines. Trust me, you will not be popular. On top of that, of course, you need your firearm. You're going to have either your pistol, which will be unloaded and sitting in your holster, or your unloaded pistol rimfire in the bag. If you're shooting rifle, same concept, again, unloaded, flagged, or in a bag, all right? But you will show up at the stage with your unloaded firearm. When you get to the shooter's box, you are now under the control of the range officer. That person will tell you what to do and when to do it. The first command that you will hear from the range officer is make ready. Now, if we are shooting a semi-automatic centerfire pistol, the first thing we'll do is when he says make ready, I will grab a loaded magazine. Obviously, in this example, it's unloaded. But I'll take a loaded magazine and I will load the pistol, at which point I will then put it back into my holster, loaded and ready to go. Once it's in the holster, I will then assume the surrender position. At that point in time, I will wait, I will hear stand by from the range officer, then an audible beep, at which point that beep is telling me it's time to start shooting. I then engage the five steel targets in front of me. The last one I want to hit always, remember, is that stop plate. That's the one with the red post. Okay. Now, if I'm shooting a rifle or a rimfire pistol, when the range officer says make ready, same concept, I will take the pistol, I will load it, or the rifle, and I will load the mag, rack it, and make sure there's one in the chamber. But in this instance, because it's a rifle, or rim fire pistol, I will assume the low ready position with my finger off the trigger. At that point in time, same concept, the range officer will notice me ready to go and say, stand by. I will then hear the audible beep, at which point again, it's my time to engage the steel targets. Now, as I said, you will do the steel targets in whatever order you want, but the one with the red post, the stop plate, is the one you will do last. 
If you decide to engage that first, what that means is you've just missed the four other steel plates. Because the moment you hit the stop plate, you're no longer track of your time. At that point, if you've missed something, it's a three second penalty. Penalties are bad. So you engage your five targets, the stop plate last. You'll do that five times. The first time you do it, you will then, when you're done and you've hit the stop plate, you on your own will take the mag out, load a new mag, and assume the appropriate position. If it's a center fire gun you're shooting, it's the surrender position. If it's a rim fire pistol or it's a rifle, the low ready position. At which point, when the range officer sees you in that position, ready to go, they will again say, stand by, the audible beep, and you will engage the targets again. Once you've done that five times, at that point in time, the ranger officer will say, if you are done, unload and show clear. At which point, you will rack your gun and you will show them there is nothing in the chamber. Again, you will show that if it's the rifle, if it's your rimfire pistol, or your center file, or if it's a revolver. Whatever the case may be, you will show them it is clear and empty. At which point, you can put the slide forward, hammer down, and then you will either, if it's a center fire pistol, you will put it back in the holster. If it's a rifle, you will put the flag on it or bag it. If it's a rimfire pistol, you will bag it. Once you're done with that, then the range officer will say, the range is clear and you are done. At which point, you'll then also hear them say, sometimes pick and paint which really means pick up your brass, unless you're at a particular match where they don't allow you to do that, but you would pick up your brass and then the shooters around you would go up and paint the steel targets, which you will do when you are not shooting. So let's take a look at the eight stages of steel challenge and how they're scored, because seven of the eight stages, you only keep four of your five runs and one of them, you only keep three of your four runs. So again, let's take a look at the stages. The first stage we'll talk about is Pendulum. Pendulum is made up of three 12 inch plates and two 10 inch plates. Farthest distance, 18 yards. Roundabout, our next stage, is made up of five 12 inch plates, only 17 yards being the farthest. Five to go, sort of the toughest one as most people will say. That one has got four 10 inch plates heading away from you. Farthest one, 18 yards away with a stop paid, of course, 12 inches. The next one is Outer Limits. Now, Outer Limits introduces the 18 by 24 inch plates. Also, you'll notice there's three shooting boxes. This one is the only one that gets you on the move. In other words, if you start from the left hand box, you will shoot the first two targets from there. You will then move over to the center box and shoot the remaining three targets. Same goes on the right hand side. If you start on the right and you shoot two targets there, you then move to the center to do the other three. Now, the key thing this also introduces is best three out of four times. All the other stages you shoot five times, as you remember from my previous segment. In this example, Outer Limits, you only shoot it four times and the best three runs become your time for the stage. Then you've got Accelerator, again, two 18 by 24s, two 12 inch and one 10 inch, the farthest being 20 yards away. You then have speed option, another distance one 35 yards away with an 18 by 24 and four 12 inch plates. You have showdown. Now showdown with your two 18 by 24 inch plates has two boxes if you'll notice. The idea is, remember we talked about five times you'll do this or five runs. You will shoot two runs from one box, three runs from the other box. So on showdown you'll either do three runs or two runs from the first box then move over and do two runs or three runs from the other box. The key is two runs on one box, three runs on the other box, total of five runs. The last stage is smoke and hope. This is the fastest stage and sometimes the most aggravating stage. What do I mean by that? Well, you've got four 18 by 24 inch plates not too far away. What you usually find is shooters shoot this so fast or attempt to shoot it so fast that they actually miss these 18 by 24 inch plates. So I'd highly recommend that even though they are big, you want to make sure the objective is to hit all of the plates. Missing fast doesn't really help. So those are your eight stages. Again, seven of them are best four out of five runs. You add those together, that gives you your total time for the stage. Whereas outer limits, the blue one, is best three out of four times is your time for the stage. The last topic we're going to review is classifications. Now the Steel Challenge Shooting Association allows you to get classified. Those classifications are basically representative of how good you're shooting. 
Those levels are Grandmaster, Master, A, B, C, and D. The way you get classified is one, you join the USPSA or SCSA, all right? Second, you attend a match who uploads their scores to the Steel Challenge Shooting Association, such as the Old Bridge matches for Sunday Steel. Those times in conjunction with the division you're in are used to calculate what level you are at. And every time you do a little better, that better score is used in your overall classification. I recommend you either head over to the Old Bridge Steel Challenge site to see how we take care of that classification work for you in terms of the math, or you can go to steelchallenge.com, the official source, and they can explain to you as well how the individual stages are calculated.